In the book of Galatians, Paul, a true apostle of God sent to the Gentiles, writes to the churches of Galatia, who he believed have been bewitched, because though Paul preached the true gospel or true Jesus to them, and they had received his message, received the Spirit of God, and begun in the Spirit, they had given heed to false teachers with another gospel. The result is they were now under the law. So Paul proceeds to explain and warn them of the dangers of putting themselves under the law in the old covenant and the need to remain in the new covenant, which is by the Holy Spirit. He starts by reaffirming that no man is justified by the law or by the works of the law. He goes on to say that the law is not of faith, but of works. The implications of that is, he says, Abraham had faith or believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Therefore, true children of Abraham are those of faith, not of works. The blessing of all nations through Abraham goes for those of faith with faithful Abraham. However, as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. But Christ had redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangs on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So Paul points out that the blessing or promise was made to Abraham's seed, which is Christ. He says, The old covenant law, which was 430 years after God's promise to Abraham, cannot cancel the promise which was based on faith. He says if the promise or inheritance is based on keeping the law, then it is no more a promise. The promise was not going to be fulfilled by keeping the law. So what was the purpose of the law? He says it was added because of sin or transgression. The law acted as a schoolmaster to keep us in order to the seed Christ carrying the promise should come so that we might be justified by faith in Christ Jesus. For in the law, we were in bondage under the elements of the world, observing certain days, months, and times and years. But the fullness of time came, and God sent forth his Son to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons. And because we are sons, God has sent forth the Spirit of his Son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So Paul goes ahead to say that those under the law are like the child born of Hagar, the bondwoman or servant after the flesh, and compares them to Mount Sinai, where the law was originally given. And those in the new covenant by the Spirit, like the child born by Sarah, the free woman by promise, and compares them to Jerusalem, the promised land. He says, the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. So he encourages the churches of Galatia to stand fast in the liberty that they have in Christ and not to be entangled in the law. He reminds them that if they would seek justification by the law through circumcision, etc., then Christ is of no use for them. They have fallen from his grace. He admonishes them to simply walk in love because love is the fulfillment of the whole law. To walk in spirit and manifest the fruits of the Holy Spirit so they don't indulge in the works of the flesh. He finishes off by telling them to bear one another's burdens. Again, is the same message. Instead of going back to the law to get a sense of discipline, of righteousness to your life and overcome the flesh, simply walk in the spirit, walk in love, and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. That summarizes the book of Galatians.